Okay, good afternoon, welcome. You are still in the Royal Society, London, UK. And we'll continue with the lecture. And uh, we, um, Julien and Ravi will present uh, two uh, interesting cases. Uh, so who will start? Ah, Ravi. So this is the short case. Uh, well, more or less, uh, the, the, I'm not sure about the concrete data, but it is like almost like this. So 35 years old, she was at one of my colleagues in Berlin <coughs> having their uh, nuclear scan. It was uh, around slightly less than three millimeters at 13 weeks. Uh, she didn't have biochemistry yet. And uh, the, the colleague said he's not sure about the nasal bone, but he said he's not sure about the heart. She wants to have a control later on. She went back to her doctor, and the doctor says, I will go, please, to, to Dr. Shaw that you have a second opinion on the heart. Now, in general, if you get the phone call, um, yeah, the nuclear was borderline, and the, the heart was not well seen. It's not very urgent as when the doctor calls himself and try to get an appointment. So I said, okay. And then she came. Uh, by 14 weeks, as I was asking, what do you want? So as she told me the story, I said, okay, then uh, why didn't you wait? So, and this is the image I saw. I forgot to make the animation, so it's written already what is seen here. 14 plus five, navy septal defect. And here you see the baby is moving. This is the linear probe. Navy septal defect, you will have two, three common diagnoses here. But as you have, I hope you have seen that in this picture also, the stomach was on the on the left side. It was just under the stomach, uh, under the heart. And as you see, the great vessels were normal first. This is the fourth chamber view here. The typical some regurgitation you see it very often. And what I saw here was surprised to see the ARSA. I said, poor lady. What is, in our opinion, the likelihood of having trisomy 21? Low, high, very high. Very high. Do you think it's a trisomy 21? Of course not, because otherwise I will step down and say, okay, thank you for your attention. For three slides, I will not show you a case like this. So it should be something different. Anyway. She did an invasive. We did it on the same day. She, oh, I don't want, and I was uh, not sure. And, and later on, we asked her to do uh, an array, and it was normal as well. So <clears throat> I called the lady last week before I came here, so uh, the baby is born. Anyway, so and what to counsel when we have AV canal? In general, this is a typical uh, discussion we have. First of all, you think it could be aneuploidy. This is why we did the, the, uh, the karyotype. Second, in general, this is 50 to 70 percent. The second group is isomerism. What we check for is the position of the stomach, position of the heart, and if there is abnormalities on the venous system. Third, it can be any of some complex syndromes. This is why you, you should look for additional extra cardiac signs, which is for some very severe one, easy in gestation, but in general, these are things you cannot see very <coughs> easily, but this is what we'll focus on when we have ruled out this. So in general, when I see a V-canal in this uh, age of a woman, it is one from her age alone. Uh, it's one of the 300. It can be Down syndrome, so this is very likely. All other things here are less than 1 to 20,000 to 1 to 100,000. So this is why you should not think on the same level for all these things, but this is why you think first here and then after having this part, we have a discussion with the lady, let's say 10 days later on, on what is a septal defect and what can we do and how can we operate it. So, and last but not least, it can be isolated, but in general, some of these cases will have additional cardiac 
abnormalities like coarctation because it can be unbalanced and so on. So, uh, but this is an isolated cardiac problem and not some syndromic. So, and you have seen here the aberrant, but what is this vessel here? What is this? Sorry? Hey, no, we are outside of the heart. Coronary in the heart. What is this vessel? Brachio exactly. This is the brachiocephalic vein or innominate vein. Why do we see it? Because it's there. <laughs> left superior vena cava. But in general, the left superior vena cava, they have no innominate vein. In superior vena cava, you don't have. But what you see here, which color, wait, which color do you see here? Which color do you see here? It's red. Right to left. In other words, what I saw at this stage also, but I didn't tell you, is this. You have here a left superior vena cava, but you don't have a right superior vena cava. If you have right and left, you don't have a bridging vein. If you have a brachiocephalic vein, it should go from left to right. We should have seen it the same color as the arsa. We see it the opposite color. Let's say my true diagnosis was at this stage, left superior vena cava plus arsa plus AV canal. For me, I was stubborn to maternal age down, but it was not down. So now, I said I will see her a week later and check the venous system because, but what I haven't seen at that time is this, what is this? This is the hemiazygos, if we are correct, the hemiazygos. The azygos is on the right, but we never see the hemiazygos like this. So, what is here going wrong? When you see such a vessel, it, come, it comes from the ductus. <coughs> it can come from the ductus, but in, in hemiazygos or azygos, when you have this one, is the place where the azygos is emptying. But in general, at this preset, you don't see such a very tiny vessel unless the vessel is dilated. The vessel is dilated when you have no cava inferior, and this is azygos or heavy azygos continuity. <coughs> No, 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 in this case, no. So, now, I, a week later, 15 weeks, I saw the azygos or hemiazygos continuity near the aorta. Four chamber view, stomach on the left. Assumed it is normal isomerism, but because of this tiny vessel, because we have left superior vena cava and a hemiazygos, we have the two major veins are on the left, and this typical for could be for left isomerism. Anyway, she went for counseling. They told her, oh, very nice, we can operate the heart, the classical uh, discussion, how it's operated. And this is here, the diagnosis. ARSA and AVST, stomach is left, and left SVC is what I saw. Later on, I saw that there is no right SVC. There is a dilated hemiazygos. There is no inferior vena cava, hemiazygos continuity, which is the same, uh, more or less. But but you see here now, later on gestation, you see the two vessel sign. If you are careful, you may recognize here the appendage of the left side. But this is, you see, only because you know what you are looking for. Uh, now, I quoted it the last week because I want to know what is about uh, this baby. Sorry. And she told me, well, we are very happy and so on, but it was not true. What uh, we're told, everything you told us was correct, but the counseling was different because the baby cannot be operated yet. The mitral valve part is not well developed. And this is why they want to separate the chambers, but they cannot because the venous system is almost ending in the left atrium, so they cannot close. They need to find a way to bring the whole venous system, which is on the left, to the right atrium. And this is why they first did a bending of the pulmonary artery, and they wait, and they are not sure for so-called a simple cardiac abnormality that it will be even operated. It may be not operable because of these two venous abnormalities. They need to change the course of the venous system. 
And she said, well, I'm disappointed that the counseling was standard, very easy. I oh, will do it. Don't worry. Every canal is never a problem and so on and so on. And then it ended up of having a baby of every second sentence. I love my baby and so on. But I say, OK, I don't know, but uh, how things can wo can go and it can be a non-operable heart within uh, lifelong as an AV canal. So details are important. This I add this because I was not sure if we cover enough the venous system in first trimester. But you see, even if you see it here, you cannot always deduce as easy as uh, as we showed you. So this was my case. Yep. Oh, please go ahead. The common, yeah. The microphone. That's when the sequential diagnosis uh, is important, because if you have left isomerism, you would have to trace all the connections, venous mm -hmm. connection, not just the azigus, but the pulmonary veins, because not infrequently you're going to have two veins on the right, right side of the atrium, yeah. two veins on the left side of the atrium. And the azigus quite often goes into a coronary sinus, which ends up on the right atrium. Mm. But so you need to yeah. follow that to mm. see if it goes to the right atrium. Because mm. if it goes straight into the left atrium, mm. they can operate. <coughs> they do a kind of what used to do for transposition before, which the channel is called a mustard or seni. Mm. But there may be that the AV valve, which is not a mm. mitral valve, because mm. a common mm. valve, <coughs> is not a perfect valve to divide. Yeah. So you know, it's the morphology of the, mm. if you had a stick, which you may have had, mm. I would look at the more for short texts mm. of the mitral valve. The problem is that, mm. uh, you know, if you imagine you are this woman and you decided to come for a specialist, and when you heard it is 80, 90% transmit 21, you decide to terminate pregnancy. And they said, no, we do CVS, and we have counseling later on. And she needs the complete counseling a week later because she said, you know, before I decide to continue, I want to have the best counseling. So she goes to the cardiologist, and the cardiologist say what they can say at 15 weeks. But many of these things change in pregnancy. And once it's difficult then to tell people, oh, now let us go and uh, change many things. For me, it was, as you were saying, uh, the same. The pro veins were normal at this stage. But uh, in some cases of AV canal, you don't have a true uh, coronary sinus. It is kind of ending in this common atrial yeah. part. Yeah. And this is difficult to, to see. So what, what I learned afterwards is, uh, should you tell this woman that it's possible that we don't, yeah? yeah. Well, you would have to work out all the venous return mm. as much as you can to be able to see how <coughs> the surgeons could potentially channel. Mm. And if you, if you can't say, it, we're not sure if it's going to be possible. Mm. You should tell, yeah. should tell mm. her. If you can't follow the channels, usually, if you're looking for it, I'm sure you would have traced them. The other one thing is they have left isomers. They have about a 10, 15% chance of gut malrotation. Mm. Uh, what or, was not? Mm. Uh, which is, you know, they need to know as well. There is also about a 5% risk of primary cilia dyskinesia. Yeah. This is what I was worried Bilia about. Biliary atresia, yeah. you know, all of those things need to be But this one, the biliary atresia was uh, common. It was not the case, but I was more less, um, afraid about the, the, yeah. the PCD. That's why I said we may not have needed the array, but targeted examination of the ciliary dys dyskinesia. It's only, it's less than 5%, yeah. the, the risk of that. OK. okay. Next, please. Next. Okay. Uh, another question? <coughs> Excuse me. In this case, the, the parents or the woman, if they decided to terminate, how would I, I don't, I don't we don't hear you? Take the microphone or, yeah. Okay. Do you hear me? Yeah, very good. In no. this case, yeah, the woman or par uh, parents, if decided to terminate the pregnancy, what, uh, how would you be counseling this uh, patient? Repeat the question. I understand. If your question is, if she wanted to terminate the pregnancy, how to counsel her? Well, she was. Look, look. Uh, at this stage, at one stage, she was to terminate the pregnancy because she said, "I don't want a f child with a heart problem." So I said, "You know, before you say this, and before you get your information from internet, you go to a cardiologist and you discuss with the cardiologist. And if she says she doesn't want, so I cannot say don't. Of course, you can." Because I know that at the end, we can have a lot of disease. What we, what we decided to do, to take the maximum of the, on diagnosis until 18 weeks, 
And this is what you did with, with finish an area, we finished the heart, and we said, okay, but uh, I didn't assume that this course can be so complicated that they have to, to re-channel the, uh, the finish system. It wasn't, if it was an, let's say, an everyday case, I will not present as a uh, normal case. So this is, uh, but you cannot, if uh, you know, one of the transpositions I showed you decided to terminate pregnancy. I'm, I'm a little bit unhappy that I detect them in early gestation. So I never had terminations for transposition, but in the era of having 11, 12 weeks malformation, I tell her, don't worry, you will wait and will uh, operate and will operate on no. the coronary arteries. Some, some may say we don't want. No, thank you, doctor. Yeah, but you know, but, but this is a problem. Uh, and the same will have with the cleft palate. Some will have an isolated one. You will see it. And, and we, we but you know, this is, this is a fetal medicine. Yeah, but. We see MV. But I, st yeah, I st and some will uh, decide to terminate because it was in Brazil. Yeah, recently, and they had some fever without having the, you know, this is, but I started doing fetal medicine in the 80s when we were terminating pregnancies only because of contact with some persons having rubella. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it yes, was at yes, that time, yes. this is the standard indication. So today we are doing better, but uh, patients are more informed than, than it's the case. So thank, thank you. And uh, 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 si since you, you spoke about Z Zika, uh, tomorrow will be a small change in the program, and I will add a, a small lecture, a 15 to 20 minutes lecture on Zika, so we will be able to show you the cases uh, we have seen and also the cases I have received from, from people in Brazil and Colombia. I think it will be interesting for you. Okay, um, brief case. Mm. <coughs> this is a woman. Um, who is uh, 34 year old? She um, came to see Kiprus um, from a different hospital. On her first pregnancy, she'd had a NUCO of 2.6 and a low combined risk. She refer, self referred to the unit because she wanted to have a package for NIPT. So the previous screening had been in her local hospital. So so she had very good people scanning her uh, from Kipris's fellows, and they suspected a cardiac abnormality. So they were offered a CVS, uh, but decided to wait for the cardiac assessment. So I'm just going to show you some of these initial pictures so you can uh, see what was done in terms of investigation. This is from the, the phytomedicine team, so the NUCO. Nice pictures, 2.6, Dr. Zuenosus, <coughs> yeah. So, you know, she came primarily to see her risk of chromosome abnormality because they do try to screen for the heart as well. They got that fourth chamber, so two ventricles. Um, they didn't report any tricuspid regurgitation. There was this signal there which puts the question, do you think this is tricuspid regurgitation? I didn't think it was, but you see that sometimes, you know, some of the things that we weigh are difficult to judge, isn't it? It was not reported, was not entered on her risk assessment. And, uh, you know, the, the fellows are very good, so they did a little clip. What do you think of that? I was just about to. <laughs> My lost control there. So those are the two ventricles, yeah? And as. I don't know, that's, yeah, that's all I had to look at. So you're moving towards the outflow tracks? There's another picture. You can come back to that if you want. Looks as if the right uh, inflow in the heart of the These are the two inflows. Yeah, it's a bit dark, so that's the original. <laughs> 
And that's that's the outflow. Any? This is the large cylinder rod. The large what? The large vessel with this bent. This similar to the case I showed before. What do you mean? What what's the diagnosis, Rabbi? The next, the next will show you that it's going bent like this. True. My suspicion would be probably at least it would be a stain like the Yeah. So, pometry is a VST? This is an Sorry? This is an No, in the order. No, this is the order. I don't know. Um, that's the, the image the obstetrician has taken. Uh, he, he scanned her. He saw keepers who said, yes, there's a heart abnormality. Come back in two days to see the cardiologist. Because <clears throat> his keepers is not going to make the diagnosis. He just said, there's a heart abnormality. But the fellow made his presumptive diagnosis. So I'll go back to the previous one. One large vessel in the three vessels like a view means the other one is small. Should be. Well, have you seen a second vessel? Have we seen a second vessel? No. But maybe due to the game. Uh, not my settings. <laughs> I looked at the pictures. And then their conclusion, there was a large ventricular septal defect, <coughs> an overriding vessel, and they could only see one vessel. Yeah. So when I, um, when I brought the woman, I obviously initially already told her she was almost, you know, she was in a state. She was first pregnancy, say major heart abnormality possibly chromosome abnormality. Um, and I said, her, you know, there is a problem. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to get more information because you're only 12 weeks. So for me to say, yes, there's a problem, you know, she wants me to tell her what exactly the problem is, what's going to happen. So I said, there is a chance we're not going to see enough. And if, if not, we may try a transvaginal scan because the fellows can do that. Or we bring you back in two weeks. That's before scanning her. The school to the money school. <laughs> so they offered her CVS, as I said. What else? I've already given that answer. So she came. Do another ultrasound. Take out the color. Try to see the, the, the outlet. Try to see if this appears or not. But this, try. Well, what they offer is come and see the cardiologist. <laughs> because yeah. I was there in two days. So, so two days afterwards. I think you can see things without color. I do agree entirely that you should not, not use color. Any clues? This is her twin sister. <laughs> Don't say anything, Ravi. Any, any clues to what the diagnosis is? Do you think there is a VSD? Something is wrong. Uh, Something is wrong, maybe, I agree. Maybe, but not in the play, not what they wrote. Maybe it's, uh, you cannot exclude a small VSD, but... Uh, well, I never exclude a small VSD at 12 weeks. I never exclude a small VSD at 20 weeks. You see one vessel, one vessel. Do you? The diagnosis is actually in the scan that they did, but uh, you haven't picked it up. Which is a question of getting used to things. The diagnosis is here already. Any, any suggestions? Transposition. It's coming like that. It's transposition. Not some two or three people have said that. It's transposition. Yes, the, the pulmonic is coming from the wrong place. So this is the left ventricular outflow track. You see the pulmonary valve, and that's the aorta coming on top there. There is, le there is pulmonary mitral continuity. No, this, this is the pulmonary.
And there is your aorta coming here. Yeah. Can you see the two vessels now? Yeah. Yeah, but I could see it on the, without the color. Actually, we'll go back to the obstetrician's picture afterwards. So again, it's doing what Rabbi said. Once you get that, you just go slightly more oblique, and then you move into sagittal views. So I'll go back to this picture, I think. Yeah. You can see that it looks as if it's override, but actually, it's because the color setting is not very fine-tuned, you are mixing here the pulmonary coming off the left and the aorta coming, and it's making it look like a big vessel. But a little bit further up, I think you can, you can just see that they separate a little bit. You see a little bit of two different streams there? Yeah? In there, I think you can, you can just see this. Can you see there's a little bit of a separation here? One vessel here, the other one there. Which is to make the same point that I tried to make on my presentation earlier on. You know, images can be very uh, deceiving. You can misinterpret the information. So that woman could easily have gone and said, okay, you know, large vessel, overriding, one vessel, risk of chromosome abnormality, 12 weeks, terminate the pregnancy. So I, you know, she was really almost in tears the whole time while I was scanning her. So the moment I knew it was transposition, I have a simple way of delivering that information very quickly so that she doesn't um, wait a long time for the counseling, which is, yes, we confirm there is a problem. Your baby's fine, your baby's moving, your baby's doing everything okay. We don't need to do anything until your baby's born, but your baby's going to need surgery, and we can deal with that, and the likelihood <coughs> that the baby will do well. So that's a very brief summary over, you know, the remainder of the pregnancy. She almost jumped and said, is my baby not going to die? Which is completely different from what you said. And then in talking to her, her best friend has got a baby with a heart abnormal who is now five, and, uh, she's, um, and, the, and the child is doing very well, so she's got a very positive uh, attitude to that. <coughs> so simple transposition, the valves are normal, the aorta looks normal. So that, so it's about the mistake, the spelling. CVS? No need for CVS, yeah? The, the risk of chromosome abnormality is negligible. What else? Just be positive, because the chances are the baby will do well, yeah? Look at the brain. <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> at this stage, things may change slightly. With some VST and so on, it can be more... Not, not a large VST, not... not but, but I, I will always offer a CVS. Yeah. Even if I don't believe it's going to be... Like the other It's one, not that we don't I offer... It was <laughs> isomers, I said, okay, we could have not needed him, but... Uh, while counseling, easier to say this part. Yeah, we, we, don't, uh, we don't deny them the, the, the option of having an, she had already been offered the CVS, and she decided to wait to see what the cardiac diagnosis was. When I spoke to her, I said, you can have the CVS, but the chances are gonna come back normal. The risk is, I've seen three babies with transposition that had chromosome abnormality. One Kleiner Felter, one, um, Mosaic Turner, and one Down syndrome. What? Downs, which I'm sure is chance. What? You know, just chance. You have experience with CMA and, um, and uh, heart ball formation of any kind? With, sorry? CMA, uh, chromosomal microarray. Chromosomal? Microarray. Yes, we do, we do pick up some, you know, the geneticists are doing, they find sometimes something very bizarre. Is that your question? You no, uh, yeah, of course, but you don't find any association between problem of CMA and a heart malformation. Well, we, we, mean, we find a heart malformation, and some of them turn up to have a, a, an abnormal array. Okay. Yeah, most of them are still fine. 
but sometimes they do pick up something. I had a, a lady not long ago who had, was referred because of mild pericardial fusion and a bit of tricuspid regurgitation. So markers for chromosome abnormality. The heart was otherwise normal. The valve was slightly dysplastic. So I did stress to her there was you know, potentially a chromosome abnormality. So she had the, the um, new and uh, the, the PCR was normal, so it was not trisomies. And then she went to have the, the array and it came back with a very, I, I don't know exact the details, but it came back with an abnormal array, something that hadn't actually been described in the fetus. The geneticists had quickly written it up. <laughs> And it was terminated? It was because it was associated with uh, um, neurodevelopment. It's a very established syndrome. I can't remember exactly what it was. Yes, it was so terminated. Do you recommend every heart malformation to pass through a CMA uh, analysis? Well, we have a good clinical geneticist in our, in our unit. So if, the, if there is a, a, an abnormality, then they will do an array. I wouldn't recommend for every abnormality. For those that we think there is a risk of chrom chromosome abnormality in general, uh, they, if they do decide to have the amnio, the, the cordocentesis or the CVS, and then they, uh, they, they do get the array. Okay, thank you.